Hello, and you are back in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. This is our 52nd episode, and today we'll be discussing AI spying on you, Mayorkas and Santos are just the tip of the iceberg, and if someone like Joe Biden can become president, the office shouldn't exist. So, I'm going to get right into this with AI. There's actually some big breaking news with AI. I believe uh, OpenAI, which does ChatGPT, is launching Sora, which... Uh, you give it a prompt, you can generate an, a minute-long video, and that technology is only going to get better. So AI as a tool is here to stay. It's only improving. It's only becoming more complex and becoming more able to do things. And one of the things, where I'm going to get into this article right here, read the headline, is AI may be spying on your work chats. So a growing number of large employers are using AI tools to monitor the messages employees send on company systems. Walmart, Starbucks, Nestle are among the adopters of one tool called Aware, according to CNBC. Analyzes employee chats to tell businesses how their workers are feeling, identify bullying, and flag instances of employees breaking company policy. So if you work at Nestle Corporate and you say Janice from accounting has a really nice ass, uh, it's going to be mentioned in your next review because an AI uh, saw it, noted it, logged it down. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is just for big companies, right? Um, are doing this. Of course, the government is going to be using this um, to spy on regular citizens. You're going to have um, these large companies not use it just for their employees. They're going to use it for their customers. They uh, gather even more information. So AI is this tool, like, like I said, and like any tool, it's who uses a tool that um, determines the effect that it's going to have on uh, the outward society and doing stuff like spying on people um, is, is is definitely not a good thing. But uh, like I said, AI is here to stay. And the fact that AI is getting more complex, more efficient, means that anyone who is interested in productivity and being able to do stuff is going to be using AI as part of their workflow. And this is why you have these big companies doing it, because there's Literally six and a half billion messages from more than three million employees that Aware has been able to collect and analyze. Humans couldn't do that. You have you could get like a team of like one two thousand humans doing that, and you have to put them all on payroll to do that, and they wouldn't be able to do it in the way AI can. So even if AI does a bad job of going through these messages, six and a half billion messages, um, it's going to be an infinitely better job than uh, a team of humans can do, and you don't have to pay them. Uh, payroll. You don't have to pay them benefits. You don't have to worry about firing them if they um, don't do their jobs correctly. And if you do fire them, you don't have to worry about getting a, a wrongful termination suit on your desk. So there's a lot of reasons why AI is going to be replacing people. It's going to be spying on the people who are, aren't are being replaced. And it's also just going to be spying on anyone in general. So when I when I heard about this, my, my concern is the state using this, like FBI, CIA using AI to spy on people, to engage in their psyops. And I, I'm for sure it's happening in, in some degree. Uh, if uh, corporate America is doing this, then I am 100% certain that the government is doing this these sorts of things so it's something to keep in mind um like i said but th does this mean that you should uh become a luddite and run into the uh the trees and never use technology again i mean i have a plan but uh, to do something similar but i'll have starlang with me i'd say no i would say identify what you can use ai to make yourself a more productive person and do that uh because everyone else is going to be doing that and like, like i said ai is merely a tool and the person who uses the tool determines the effect it's going to have on the individual and the society around them. So we're going to get into the next topic here. And this is Mayorkas and Santos. So I think Mayorkas is facing an impeachment. He's the, I think, um, secretary. He's part of Biden's cabinet. I think he's the secretary of Homeland Security, if I have uh, remembered correctly. So he's head honcho, <laughs> honcho of the border situation uh, and of course that border situation has been an unmitigated disaster so much so that they want to impeach Mayorkas and of course they're saying you know this is just a baseless political attack and, and you know he's a good cabinet member and public official and he just wants to ser do his job serving the public and the evil MAGA Republicans aren't allowing him to do so of course you know this gives them a very standard play to do uh, all these sorts of things. Well, let's say Mayorkas go, goes, and everyone who was under Mayorkas goes. That entire, you know, 
department goes, they they re replace it with new people. The fact that the department still exists and they can do what they do and they have the authority to do what they do. Of course, that's being challenged with the courts and all, all these sorts of things. But regardless, the federal government has the authority to um, control the southern border or <laughs> let it basically just be uh, an open gate for anyone who's uh, willing to come over here illegally. Uh, that's basically what the, what they've made at this point. It's part of this intentional destruction of the country because if you have no borders and you don't have a country, and that's exactly what the Uniparty wants, to basically destroy this country so they can claim it for their own and uh, bring on the New World Order, essentially. And, you know, this is this is part of that play. So the whole, the whole thing I want to say here is that it doesn't matter if Mayorkas goes. This is not a, like, a good, positive thing if Mayorkas goes and he gets replaced with somebody else because this whole rotten system still exists. You, you just have new apples being placed in this bunch, and the bunch, as soon as they're in that bunch, they get rotted. And this is, you know, true with also, I think, his name is George Santos, a representative from the House in New York, he got outed because he lied his way to get into office a little bit too much. You know, <laughs> I mean, all, all these politicians, they lie to get into office. They uh, lie through their teeth, uh, their teeth um, every time uh, they say something when they're elected um, or when they're in office and they're doing their public duty. But he, he lied a little bit too much. He got caught red-handed doing that. So they got him out, uh, had a special election, which the Democrats won. Republicans, you know, snatched defeat from the um, jaws of victory, as they always do. I do think a lot of that is intentional. With, uh, like I said, the Uniparty, they want to have the Democrats, what they're doing, that's the Uniparty's agenda. And the Republicans are just there to be a speed bump to make all the people that aren't okay with what the Democrats um, are doing feel like they have a say in the matter. That's essentially it. And, of course, this, this election just proof that Uniparty is one of Uniparty. And the, the idea that, you know, even if it was the Republican candidate that won, it would still be the same thing. You've got this completely corrupt, broken system that one person was just participating in like anybody else, didn't do it correctly, didn't cover his tracks up correctly, and now, you know, he's out getting some new clown in there going to basically do all of the same criminal shit that the uh, Congress does in this country. So that, that's the issue there. So the public officials that get removed no matter um, when they're part of this system that's inherently corrupt. So of course you have all these people that are corrupt that should be in peace, that should not be um, serving the government if we had any sort of ethical backbone. And some of them do get kicked out. I'm not sure if Mayorkas is getting kicked out, but like I said, it doesn't matter because the system that they are a part of is inherently corrupt. It's a, based on theft and extortion um, to to um, uh, aggress upon as many people as possible. So you have a small faction of people who have all the power, wealth, and resources, and everyone else is just living as serfs under them. That is the end goal. That's basically what they want. And that's what any state is going to end up being in terms of just uh, this coalition of power. It's going to centralize to as few people as possible um, so those few people can take from everybody else. I mean, that's why taxation is a thing. That's why licensing is a thing. That's why um, all these asinine laws are a thing. It's to make the average person's life as hard and cumbersome as possible so the ones on top can go to the bank and cash the checks. They can get the waterfront property. They can get... All these sorts of things that they want, that they quote-unquote need, in quotes. Um, and then you are basically uh, working two jobs just so you can afford groceries and gas in the same week. Right? And that's basically how it is. Uh, and I think this is a good segue into the last topic. Speaking about the government and camp grants about the government, we're going to talk about Biden. So Biden had this special counsel report. It was really damning for his uh, mental um, fitness, right? That, that's what's been going around. It's basically legitimizing the concept that Joe Biden is a uh, dementia patient living in a glorified um, <laughs> retirement home. That's what the White House is now. Someone who can't work past noon, someone who can't uh, no, doesn't know what state he's in, doesn't know that the uh, <laughs> president of Egypt isn't the president of Mexico, uh, all, all these sorts of things. So all these consistent gaffes and mistakes and not knowing where he is and all, all these sorts of things. He's mentally un 
unfit to be um, in office. Ma barely mentally fit enough to play freaking bingo in a retirement home, let alone be the leader of the free world. But he became leader of the free world. And if someone like Biden can become leader of the free world, maybe we shouldn't have a presidency. Maybe the powers of the president shouldn't exist and they should be divided up amongst the states. Decentralization. That would be the best thing. Because then we wouldn't have to worry every four years about some psychopath becoming the president and doing all this shit. Because it wouldn't exist. Right? And you would have these powers that, again, should not be imbued in any one person. Uh, they'd be spread out amongst the 50 states. Right? And a lot of what the federal government does is... Uh, you know, the social safety net. The states can take care of social security and Medicare and all, all these sorts of things on their own if they're really uh, necessary. And it's also self-defense. And I, and I said this before, I think, in last week's episode when I was talking, not last week's, the last episode when I was talking about NATO, uh, is that the 50 states could have a joint defense pact with each other uh, and it could be, you know, the militias running door and all these sorts of things that the federal government does already, right? So all these things that the federal government does, the 50 states could do and you could take, you know, all the powers of the president and spread it out amongst these 50 states and basically get rid of a lot of what the president can do uh, because it just leads to crap um, <laughs> like we've been seeing the last, I don't know, uh, as long as I've been alive, uh, ever since probably, you know, after Kennedy, all, all this um, asinine stuff that's been going on with the federal government encroaching on uh, people's lives, you know, and, and hell, even before that 1913 income tax and the Fed and all these sorts of things, or just having a federal government that, you know, someone has to lead, has, someone has to be the president of and being able to have it be someone like Biden, right? And then the only other choice being Donald Trump, which, again... You know, I, I voted for Trump twice. I don't, you know, think he's the Antichrist, but he's definitely not someone that I personally like. I personally have faith in as uh, any sort of leader. Definitely a businessman. That's why we had this economic success, because he was coming at it from a business perspective. And that's why 2019 was a boom year for the economy, uh, because it was the basically end results of the, um, Trump's uh, economic policies. And it was before this uh, COVID crash. Uh, so that that's really what it is with Trump is that, you know, sure, you know, economically he's good, but he's definitely not the best <laughs> in terms of just maintaining social cohesion. And, and that's, you know, the other thing is that, you know, every four years half the country is hating the other half of the country because of who they elect to be president. So it's just another way to sow division. It's another way to keep everyone else separated. And if the presidency didn't exist, then, you know, you wouldn't have this you know, thing that caused division, and that's, you know, part of, that's one of the reasons why the presidency is probably going to exist for as long as they possibly can, because they can use it to divide people, they can use the office to um, enrich um, themselves and their cronies, you know, the Biden family and all the people working in the deep state and all, all these sorts of things, it's just, uh, it's all, you know, a club, and you aren't in it, and that's why the presidency, um, the pre presidency exists. It's because it's part of the big club that you aren't in. And it's a club that really shouldn't exist because all of their goals are nonsense. They're anti-human. They want you in the pods eating bugs. And they're going to use um, every um, state um, office to enact that policy. And the presidency is definitely one of those that they've got. Uh, their eyes on it, which is why they love Biden being president, because he's <laughs> the quintessential puppet head. It's just his administration, everyone doing all the stuff, and Biden, they just trot out um, and have him do all this stuff, and a lot of this stuff they can blame on his incompetency, or not knowing how to do things, or say he's just a bit too old, and it's all okay, and he's still experienced, and all these sorts of things. Um... And people say, like, he's an experienced statesman, he knows what he's doing, the economy's actually better than ever. You know, you also have all this gaslighting with um, all these sorts of things. So people are feeling the negative economic effects, not only from, you know, Trump's, you know, money spending, but all this stuff that Biden done when in terms of removing the Keystone XL pipeline, um, making this country non-energy independent, all the wars that were fumbled up. Uh, you, you look at the past... Um, almost four years at this point, 
of his presidency. It's been disaster after disaster, economically, uh, in terms of economic policy, in terms of domestic policy, <laughs> foreign policy. I mean, just ask uh, all the choppers flying out of freaking Kabul and the Taliban having billions of dollars of our weapons, uh, uh, how our foreign policy has gone, and then all this gasoline. So he's actually the best president ever. Well, maybe, well, ex ex exaggerate. he's actually really good uh, for this country. And he's going to finish the job, right? And finish the job means he's going to make sure you're in the pod because you can't afford anything else. And I think with that, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I hate the government. Always will. Anarcho-capitalist. So this was basically me ranting against the government and AI. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, and we're going into the outro now. Thank you for being in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe whether you're listening on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, or Substack. And be sure to subscribe to my Substack, velvetroompublishing.substack.com to keep up with Machine to Man and all my other projects.